Now, a few years ago, I was tying a lot of Catskill drives, and I was thinking maybe about getting back into it, uh, specifically the wood duck wing ones. And so I started that process of thinking about them again, looking at some pictures and, and, and looking at some of my old flies. And the, 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 the wood duck wing mounting sort of came back into my head a little bit. And there's something that I saw over the years with people mounting wood duck wings, and it's, it's that method that you learn the first time is kind of the method you stick with your entire life. And it definitely helps you get good at that method. You put that wing on, you know, perfect. If you, if you tie 100 wings on the same way, you're going to get really good at it. But uh, not every feather is going to work with one specific method. And when you run into one of these feathers that you it kind of, um, you know, doesn't work with your method, what do you do? You force it to work and maybe the wing doesn't look as good? Or do you just put it in a bag and never use it? Um, there's actually like a, 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 you know, four or five pretty good ways to put on a wing. And if you kind of, if you know all those different ways, you can maximize, uh, uh your feathers. You can get a bag uh, of, of, of a dozen feathers and, and, and actually make more than 12 flies out of them. So I wanted to put 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 four or five different methods into one video, uh, so you can see them all and how and how they work and and may, maybe it'll help you. Maybe it'll help you maximize your feathers, save some money. Maybe you'll see a method on there that actually turns out to be easier for you than the one that you're doing. Um, but um, but they all pretty much work exactly the same in the end. Um, it's just like a different way of looking at it, a different way of, of, of using up those barbs on the feather. And so let me, uh, let me, let me run this video of uh, me tying on uh, a few wings for you. All right, thanks. This is a size 12 dry fly hook. Doesn't really make a difference which one you're using. I'm just, this is the one I have. Uh, you know, in the vise that I'm gonna show it to you on this one. I'm using a black thread. Obviously you should use a thread that matches your matches your fly. Now when I tie this thing on, the thing that always actually stays the same, at least for me, is, is that I, I tie on a little back of the eye and I go halfway and then I go back up. That's how I start every one. It doesn't matter which method I'm using. And I start, I stop a little bit short of where I tied on. And that's two, 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 for two reasons. This is that one, if, if you want to tie it where it's, it's, you leave that space in the front, which you see a lot, it's called like the Catskill Dry style, where there's a space in the front, which most people think um, um, it's for a turtle knot. Not a turtle, but a turtle knot. And originally, I actually thought it was a turtle knot, but it's a turtle. It's like a a guy with the last name Turl, he came up with this knot that goes around the eye. So you have to leave it bare there. That's what most people believe the reason for that is for. No one actually really knows, but that's what most people believe. So either way, if you want to leave that space or you don't want to leave that space, I usually start it back just to give you, you know, so you don't rush the eye too much. But, and you're stopping two turns from the front where you tie it on. Maybe three. It doesn't really make difference. All right. So wood duck. The um, the first one, the first method I guess I'll 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 do here is the one I think most people know about, and um, that's where you clip the tip out of it, and you only need one feather for this method, and I'm just pulling from a from a box of wood duck right now. Just, just looking. Do, doing it right here on camera. I'm, I haven't prepared anything, so the, the video might jump around a little bit, but... One good thing that you should look for is when you pull a feather, and this is kind of on all of them, really, is, is that when you pull a feather, you want to see how many tips are lined up. If, if you have a feather that's not very flat on the front, it's going to be difficult to to get a wing, but if you can see, this one is 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 sort of flat up front. I, I think it's it's not bad. 
Yeah, this is not horrendous. It's kind of light, but for the purposes of, of uh, showing how it's done, I think it's fine for now. Uh, the, the, so the first thing I'll do is, is pretty much on all of them, is I'll get rid of this, this fluff. Because it just makes things difficult. Working around the fluff. And with this method, you're, cl you're clipping out the tip. Pretty far up. You're not taking that many fibers out. For many reasons, you don't want to take many many fibers out. Is that you want as many fibers as you can get in the wing. But the the reason you're clipping out this tip is you're making it easy easier uh, to split it. Some people like this method, some people don't, obviously. That's that's how every one of these methods is going to be, so I'll probably, that'll probably be the last time I say that. There it is right there. Now, as you can see, this side, it's a little more sparse than this side, so you got to be careful there. you got to be careful. You kind of want to make them even. So... Pull a little off the heavy side. That should be okay. And we tie it on like that so it's easier to post. All right. Now we you take them all, you bunch them up. You can even fold them. What you're trying to do here is is get as many of the tips aligned as possible. And then you're gonna see the short ones. See that? You can see the short ones there. So if you take that, get rid of them. Now you got a bunch, pretty much even, and you wanna measure about a hook. The length, I'm not gonna really talk about too much, but it's, it's around a hook. And then you want to tie on right where it is there, and you're gonna you're you're tying a a few turns back. Make sure it's tight, and you can go forward. You lift up the wing, and you're doing turns right in the crevice there. See that? And then you want to split them. Now, splitting... The, the, this part, I think, is... is basically the same however you do it. But, essentially, what you want to do is, first of all, it makes it easier if you, if you really bend this and, and splay them. But I try and grab half. From, from my side first. And do one turn back. Make sure I got half. And then do another turn. So let's go back. Let's see, did I do two turns? I do three. So one and two. Then I'll grab the far side and I'll do one and two. Now, you'll see a lot of times where, and you can even clip this off now if you want. I'll talk about how I just clipped that in one second, but a lot of times you'll see, you see how it's got a little bit of a angle forward? That's because there's, there's not enough thread turns in the front. So after you just split them like that, now we haven't, we haven't lashed them together. And I'll show you that in a second, but you want to kind of make sure you put enough turns in so that you're essentially doing like a hollow tie. Um, you're doing like a hollow tie dam. There has to be enough turns here or it's always going to want to do this. 
It's always going to want to do this, especially when you put the hackle on to wrap it. If you put a hackle turn right up against this, it's going to want to push it forward. But if you put a hackle turn on this side really close in, it's going to want to push it back. So that, that's important. So we make sure the thing is posted up straight. Once you get those the hackle turns on, there's no way to fix this. So do it now. So now the lashing, I've done two turns this way and I did two turns this way. And then I also created more of a dam in the front. But the lashing part is you're essentially going, you're taking the thread around the wood duck. I don't know if you saw that. Maybe if I turn the, the vise this way. I'm just holding this one out of the way. And all I'm doing is I'm taking it and I'm going around. You can even do two turns if you want. And then um, it doesn't really matter which side you end on, but if you end on the far side after you just did two turns, now if you can see, it slipped off. So this is... We'll do it again, because I'm turning the vise, it's slipping off. One, two. I'm going to hold this, this thread now. So if you can see here on this one, they're lashed together. It keeps them all together. You see that? And if you look at the other one, it's splayed out a little bit. If you turn this vise, don't, don't, uh, don't let go of the bobbin or it'll slip right off. Remember, you're only tied on to... to to the to the wood duck. Make sure this thing is, is, is focusing. But after you do those two lashes, you have to do one turn onto the shank. Let me bring it back because it was out of focus. You want to do one turn onto the shank. And that kind of locks uh, locks those the, the lashing in. So now we're doing the, the, the close side. So you're bringing it up and you're going around. You can do two turns. And then again, you're putting a turn onto the shank. And that is, that's it. I mean, it's, it's, it's all lashed together. It's splayed good. And, and what did I do here? I did, forget the dam that I created in the front. I did two turns this way, two turns this way. Then I created that dam. And then I did two turns lashing on the far one and two turns lashing on this one and in between those lashings I did one turn onto the shank. And that's it. Now that method right there you can use for every single style of putting the wood duck wing on. And I don't have to show you that every single time but essentially that's how I do it and really what I try and do is I try and minimize the turns going on an angle. I, I, I don't I don't mind putting a bunch of turns here in the front because usually I don't do that 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 space up there, and I really kind of want those that wing to be as straight up as as possible. Um, but now, uh, I, from here, I just tie back, and I make sure I have one turn in front of the other, now. If you saw how I cut that end, I cut it on an angle. There's two two ways, and 95% of the people out there cut it on an angle. Uh, the only person I know that doesn't do it is a guy named Dave Brandt, which, um, if you're from the Catskills or probably from other areas, you you know that name. And and he's been he's been here a really long time, and he's been he's been fishing the, the Catskills. Oh, geez, I can't. Who even knows? Maybe. 40, 50 years or something like that, and he's very known for uh, Catskill Dries, and he cuts it straight, and that's the only person I know of, of any note, I guess, that does it like that, and he does that because when he puts the tail on, he wants the tail to sit right, he wants those two pieces to meet like this, the tail and, and the wood duck wing cut off. Most people, they, they taper it and then they essentially have the, the tail butts laying over it. And it's interesting because I never really thought about it, but it, it, doing it like this kind of makes it a little more, um, I don't want to say idiot proof, but in reality, it, when you do this, you kind of have to 
judge. You got to do a lot of judging about how you hold those scissors, and if you cut it too steep, and you could end up like this instead of you know really, um, you know, meeting perfectly and tapered. You're creating two tapers essentially, which is hard. But if you butt them like this, it's pretty easy. So, uh, I I kind of stopped tying the 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 Catskill dries maybe. I don't know, two, three years ago or so, and I didn't know about that method. But I would say that it's probably, if I ever start really tying them again, I'm getting into them again. Um, I may I may try that because it's it, it seems a little more logical to me, especially if, let's say, when you cut the wood duck, it's and you put the tail in, the tail's a little bit lower, right? If the tail's a little bit lower, then you come back and forth with the thread a few times and and, and you're up here now. But if you're like this and you're short, let's say, or let, let's say you, you're like that or something, you know, you, you, it's going to be very difficult to make up this space over. You kind of have to go all the way and then fill in this area and then go all the, you, you know what I'm saying? And I guess maybe when I started to learn how to do this method, I learned it good enough where I re it really didn't matter too much, especially if you have a dubbing body. If you have a dubbing body, it you know, kind of doesn't matter. But if you have like a quill body, if you're tying a quill gordon, you got to be careful here. Uh, so I think maybe a quill gordon would probably be better if you cut the the wood duck like real close, and then you could you could you would just have the quill going up the tail, and then it would end right here where you're going to tie on the hackle. That would be perfect. Um, so something to think about. Dave's other uh, maybe I don't know against the grain method i don't know if it's against the grain because most people do take out the tip um his his method is you don't take out the tip right and 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 i'm gonna get another feather here and i'll show you and we'll put it on here and we'll see if it matters right spoiler it doesn't matter <laughs> Don't breathe when you got a big box of wood duck in front of you. If you breathe too much, if you laugh, I just laughed and like five little wood duck feathers flew out. Um, so we got our, our piece again. I stripped some of the fluff out. I'm bringing them all together. You can fold them. This one is actually a pretty good one. So there's not many short feathers, uh, short fibers, see that? Got them all together and it's, it's looking actually pretty good. This is okay. Now let's get these things back together again. So again, we need about a hook's length. Remember, we didn't take the tip out. Did, the, did my three turns, make sure it's tight, and I go back, lift this, this wing up, now I take half, I do one turn and I look, two turns, And then I do two turns the opposite way. And I look at my my dam up front. And it, it actually seems alright, but I'm gonna put a few more in just in case. Now I'm in front again and I'm doing my my lashes. One, two. one turn onto the hook and then I do my lashes on the front one. Now I want to show you what just happened here. Sometimes what can happen is is that when you do this, I said I wasn't going to do this again but I'm going to do it again. If you pull too hard here and if your, your thread is too high, you see how it's bending? I don't know if you can tell but you can bend and the thread can just fall right off. And it can be a real pain. But you can't hold it because obviously how the hell are you gonna 
how the hell are you going to wrap the thread around um, the wood duck if you're holding it. So a good idea is to make sure you got enough thread here. Let's go back. And very loosely bring it through. So you're just doing two. And you just, you're not pulling that tight, you're just doing them loose. And if you bring your thread down this way, the thread will slide down to the center, I mean to the to the bottom, you know, like I guess the, like the root of it where it's connected to the hook. And nice and loose, because remember you're only putting two in. So once you once you get them get the threads on there and at the bottom, all you really got to do is just drop the bobbin and it'll it'll just tighten it up. And then we do our turn back here, and then we clip. Well, you know what? I'm going to clip it like Dave does. I'm going to clip it real close and straight. The next one is two wood duck feathers. And this is a good method because it actually allows you to use some feathers that you might not normally be able to use. Since it was on my wax. So halfway and then back. Okay. So let's find a couple of crap feathers. Oh yeah. Sure. We take these two. Now I don't do this method very often. Taking you're taking these two and you put them um, good side to good side, which essentially makes them splay out like this. See that? And you also want to make sure you got the same amount of fibers on each. This one looks like it's got a few extra. Just take off three from one side, and three from the other. So there we go. So splaying the opposite way. Make sure the tips are even. Bunch them together, tips are even. They're still splaying the, the, the opposite ways. We get our length in. We do our pinch and loop. Let me just make sure this is in the right spot. I think it should go back a hair. Do my three turns forward, I mean backwards, and then I do my three turns forward. I lift it up. Crank this thing in. And now I will say, if you look here, might be tough to see, but there is a real good split here, and uh, I mean it. It's very easy to find the center. Very easy. I mean, I can. It, it may be tough to see, but there is a split, a, a defined split, and obviously that's because you're using you're using two separate feathers. Uh, and if you look how look at these stems, they're. One is on one side, one is on the other side. 
and this really is it's it's kind of, it's it's but you're basically putting it on like a yeah a, a a wing for a wet fly or a wing for what a salmon fly right only obviously the the opposite way you're doing it this way so you're keeping them just like this and since they're like this when you put them on as long as you don't screw it up they're going to stay like this and i do my one two turns back this way and then one two turns forward lift it up make sure this dam is 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 big enough to to keep it the dam slipped on me dam and so there we go i think we're straight up are we straight up let's take a look here yeah sort of straight up Now we're straight. Now we come back. Make sure you got a good length of thread. You do your one, your two, your two lashes. Oh, it slipped on me. So I pulled too tight and the it it flexed and fell off. Now, if you get confused here, when you when that happens, you haven't put any thread turns anywhere. You do two around here and then it slips off. It essentially just comes off and straight. So you gotta just, you just go back right away. You don't need to take any thread turns off. You don't need to do anything, uh, anything to the fly other than just start again. So we did two and we wrap it around uh, the back. And then we did two on this side. Didn't I say I wasn't going to do this again? Okay, now, here's something important. If you look at this, it might be tough to tell, but there's some things going in some weird directions. And I believe, you know, not a lot. I mean, I could very easily just clean this up. Um, but it's because I was using two crappy feathers. Feathers that you could not use just one of to make a wing. Yeah, this one looks like it's it's all over the place here. But other than that, there's one little butt on this side. It's not that bad. Maybe there's a couple over here. But you see how much I'm trimming? Because I was using those garbage feathers. But in the end, well, let's cut this. In the end, ooh, I almost cut the wing. And it's not that bad. I clipped a couple. There it is. Splayed. There's one right here. Now I don't think that would matter too much. Once you once you put the hackle through, it would be fine. But straight up, split. So you could see that the the split there. It was easier to find the split, but since I was using two crappy feathers, shoot, 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 things were going all over the place. That's important. Now you might say, here's the next thing you might say is, is that, what about, uh, do people do it with non-crappy feathers? Well, yes, some people do it with some really good feathers. Um, and that kind of leads me into my next one here. If you do it with good feathers, or let's say you do it with big feathers, that's more that's a better explanation. Let's say you do it with big feathers. I mean you're it's like you're wasting two big feathers, right? Well, let me show you the next method. And we're gonna find a feather that's a good size. Alright, I think I found one here. 
Scion. Halfway. And we go back up. Here's the one I'm going to use. So that's a pretty good sized one. I'm going to take the fluff off, which is really, there's not much fluff on here, but I'm going to take a bunch off. Now, let's say that you did use this for that previous method. Well, you would probably do this, right? You would essentially pull back all this stuff that you're not using and then just put the tip in. And you would do two back to back, right? Just like before. So you'd need two of these feathers or something. Let's keep this one, right? Let's say it was that right there. Well, and then you might be saying, okay, well now you really are wasting a whole ton, right? Well, not really. So what you can do here is First things first, you make sure you got an, you got a, a, the right amount on either side here. And then you, you pull them out straight. And you can try and get the tips lined up. There it is. See that? Tips are lined up. And you pull this off like that. Then you tear this off. You can see when I when I pulled that, some steam came with me. You can cut that off. But that's what we got right there. There are some short ones, but I think it's gonna be alright. Now if you can see here, I have to flip it over. That's one of the problems with this method. Whenever you don't put something in a stacker, you have to flip it. Now, we got the length right, correct? There it is. We do our pinch and loop. Three turns back. Three turns forward. Lift the wing. Put our dam in. One turn, take a look. Two turns. One, two. Make sure the dam is in good. Make sure you got enough thread. Go back. Remember, be loose. Did I just put two or three? So what happens when you talk and tie at the same time and you do your one turn behind and you do your one turn behind and then we're going to tie back I think I put two turns behind let's just double check that this is hot that this is straight enough I'm going to go forward again and make sure that this dam is good. Really crank it in there. There we go. And then we go back. Straight up, splayed. Now, what, it, what, what does this allow you to do now? It allows you to take two feathers and use the tips like this and then take afterwards take this feather and make a fly out of it and this feather and make a fly out of it. So here's what I would say. That, that means you can get three out of two feathers. Two, two, two feathers with a lot of fibers on it where normally, if you cut the tip out, you couldn't. 
And this is important because I would say that that knowing this last method, which actually is kind of the hardest to manipulate in your hand, if you know that method, then you can really maximize your material. Without a doubt, you can maximize your material. And even if you got, let's say you got a really big feather, you could probably even do this method with a single feather and make two flies, right? You would, you would take the, 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 the bottom half of the feather and make one and the top half. This would have to be a really big feather though. And that's, this is, if you know these four methods, you can really maximize your material. Like, I mean, it's, it's like, normally if you just do the cut the tip method, it, it works, but only on a certain size fly where you couldn't get two flies out of it. And maybe it would be, I don't know, you could still, the cutting of the tip method and the not cutting of the tip method is the same method. I think I've proven that here is, is that it doesn't matter which, which, which way you do it. So that method is good only when you have a, a feather that you really couldn't get any more fibers out of, right? The, the two, uh, you know, top to top method where they splay like this, that's good for two crappy feathers where you couldn't take one and make a wing out of it. Even if you, you put the whole thing in there, it's just, it won't work. There's too much fluff on it. There's not enough real barbs. Um, let me pull one out of here. All right, like this one, if this one feels a, a little too crappy, this one might be actually be all right. Now I'm having trouble finding a crappy one. Okay, here's a crappy one. See that? This one's, this one's too small to tie um, most of them. I mean, it's not, it's not bad, but it's not great. You, know, you can take this, and this, this is a lot of fluff on here, it's hard to tell, but really, that's all the fibers that you got there. So if you had two of these, you you can you can you, you can make a fly, but just one of these wouldn't do. So that's important. That that the two splaying methods, that that method, the the the, the two feathers splaying method, um, that's an important one to know. And then this one, which I believe is sort of the hardest. The two splaying one is like the second hardest, and then the first two, which is cut the tip and don't cut the tip. I would say those are the two easiest ones. But um, if you know all four of these methods, uh, th th these stupid wood duck feathers, I mean, I think now it's like five bucks for like a dozen feathers. And that's like, what is that? Like 40 cents a feather or something? That's crazy. And, and if you're only going to get 12 flies out of a package, a dozen feathers, you, you got a problem, right? You want to be able to somehow get... 14 or 15 flies out of a dozen. And if you know all four of these methods, you'll be able to do that. All right. If you know another method, let me know. Um, but I believe, I believe that's, those are the, those are the four that are out there. Right? I think that's it. All right. Thanks, everyone.